Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and this is a special request RPG Maker MV tutorial for Cody Critchlow. And he's having trouble blocking a player off from an area of the map that they're not supposed to go to yet, due to um, dialogue that they haven't seen yet. Um, also, he was asking for how to do like an actor change, uh, fade out screen transition. Um, and I've, I've sent him some emails, but he was asking for a video, um, and I don't mind doing this. So. Uh, right here at this point in the game, you just got Arturus, and he's tr he's uh, got word that the castle's being raided, and he's got to go defend the castle. So you walk from the camp up in the top right over here, but if you pass the castle and try to go down here um, and cross the bridge, um, the player's going to go into the next area where we don't want him to go yet due to the plot. So if they walk on uh, the tile, it's going to say, oh, I have to defend the castle, and it's going to push him back up. And no matter how many times we go down, it's going to block the player off. So that's a real simple event. I'll show you how to do that. And it'll take about half an hour to defend the castle. So what I'm going to do is debug and uh, set up the switches so that the game thinks I've already defended the castle. And all of this stuff has already happened. So that's already happened. That's already happened. But this one, yeah, this has also happened. So now we're here. And now we've already defended the castle. And it's almost this, it's almost done, uh, we're almost done with this character's dialogue. We're going to switch to another character, so we're going to do our fade out transfer. So now this event is going to trigger the transfer. So we walk on the bridge and it does a fade out, changes the actor, um, and it does a lot of things behind the scenes that the player doesn't even see. But what, what the player does see is now that they're, now they're a different character. And we have dialogue for this character with an auto run event. And stuff's happening. But um, let me just show you how I did that really quickly. So it's uh, not too hard to do this. You just got to think uh, what happens first, what happens second, um, and be mindful of what switches you're turning on and when you're turning those switches on. So in this event, it's uh, basically uh, it would be an empty event if we wanted to walk right across it. But if our switches are set up so that we've got our player, uh, then we're going to select a condition that says if we've got this player. That's going to be on the first page that's going to block them off. So it's saying, oh, I have to defend the castle, so we'll just the right click, insert text, and then the movement route, which you, you'll put into. And we know that the player is walking from this direction, going from the, from the top to the bottom. So we'll do a, a movement route, which is on page two. We select it to the player, and then we know that they're moving down, so we want them to move them back up. So we just do move up, and we can do wait for completion. And that's all you'd have to do for that part. But make sure you set the trigger to player touch. And it has to be below characters. Otherwise, it'll be a collision. And it won't actually let the player walk on it. And that would uh, stop the event from being triggered. And if you do it uh, action button, then the player can just walk over. And unless they press enter on it, it won't put a, you know, or confirm on it, it won't push them back forward. So it's got to be player touch below characters for this particular way of doing it. On the second thing, this is after um, we've already got the dialogue from the castle, and now we're on a different mission. We're actually done with uh, this part. We have to. We're about to do the fade out to the transfer. So to do a fade out screen, all you're going to be doing is going to tab two screen, fade out screen, and that's going to make everything go black until you do a fade in. So we're fading out before we do the transfer, before we do anything else. So to do a transfer event, I'm sure you know how to do that. It's right here, transfer player. You select the destination where you want them to go. In this case, the sewers. So after we've done the, the fade out event, for your case, you were talking about those four crystals and then the goddess was there. So you would just uh, change the actor uh, on, the next, uh, on the next map. So instead of doing all of that right here, you would just do that as an auto run event on the next map. So I'll show you that. So we're going to pretend that this is going to be the scene you're looking for, uh, the deep jungle here. So the player is going to be teleported here, transferred here. And then in this event right here, it looks like a regular fireplace, but it's actually an auto run event. So we're setting the trigger auto run. Priority same as characters because we don't want them to walk on top of the fire. Um, transparency, uh, that's, that was for debugging. I actually don't need that on right now. Um, so here's what we're doing. We're changing party members. So any party members that we would have, we'd actually only need Arturus and Driftwood, but I just have uh, removing party members, uh, Tiana, anyway, in case I decide to change how I want to do the plot. But you're basically going to change party members, remove all the party members first um, if you're doing a, an actor change. Remember, you'll have to create a new actor if, for the goddess. Or 
If you don't want to do it that way, you can also just change uh, the an what where is it at? It's, you're changing uh, uh, the actor images. So under tab three system settings, you can instead of making the the actor, you can just change uh, change actor images and then just change this one. Now of course it's going to be dialogue, so you won't really need uh, the battler. But if you want to have uh, the goddess speaking or saying anything, you would change the face dialogue and change the character dialogue. So when they're looking at the the screen, they see this character standing, and when they're when you're referencing the face, uh, you can uh, just reference this the same one. So you change that at first, and then when you're done with that character and you're uh, or if, when you're done with that dialogue, if you don't change actor and you do it that way, make sure you change it back to the default one at that point. I find it's easier just to do uh, actors because then it just clears up. Oh, this actor is, I forgot he changed to this at this point in the story. And it's easier if you, you can quickly tell, oh, this actor is this actor, not this actor has this face and this battler. And, and, and I hope this makes sense. It just, it seems less convoluted if you do that extra step. Um, after that, uh, I'm doing other things that you won't really need in your game, but it's just some ideas that you might like to use. Change uh, background music. Um, in this case, we just got done with a, a boss fight, so um, I didn't want uh, the same boss battle music to be playing. Actually, I changed that around so I can kind of get rid of that, but I'm going to leave it there just in case. Then we're at, I'm adding a weight just to give, uh, I don't know, I can get rid of this weight actually, and I don't need that at this point either. I'm going to leave that though because I need to double check my other bit. But anyway, here's where we do our fade in screen. So um, if you want the text to start before uh, the screen, if you want the screen to, st to still be black and then the text starts, you can do that that way. But I always find it better when you're looking at uh, something besides a black screen with text. So I fade in the screen and then I show the text. So then we're inputting our dialogue here. and. Uh, you don't actually have to change the face now that I think about it because you could just select whatever face you want it to, to be. So all you would really have to change is the walking sprite. Yeah, I think that would be better. Um, but it's up to you. Um, like I said, I would just do actors. Um, then you show your dialogue and everything and any animations or whatever you want. Um, at this point, uh, I'm turning on a, a switch. So now you remember that first event that blocked the character off and it did the transfer event. Now I'm turning on the switch. Uh, that will go back to the uh, world map and I'll show you. Now that we've turned that switch on, um, it's switching this over so that it does nothing now. So at first it was blocking us, then after we turned on the, the switch that finished all of his, his um, what he was supposed to do, you know, what you're only blocking him off for a certain amount of time and then when he does, when he sees that dialogue, now he's ready to progress. Now you're gonna let him go across this. So um, then, uh, then this triggered and then I faded out and transferred the player and then once the player has seen that dialogue I've removed this out again so otherwise the player would walk up here and be transferred back and transferred back and transferred back in this loop so we basically turning off this event by setting a new page and remember uh, a good uh, how the game sees the the events it starts on the highest page and works to the right it's, it's not it's counterintuitive because you would think it would look, check page one first page, but it doesn't. It checks the highest number, and if it doesn't meet these conditions, it goes down to the next one. Checks all of these. If it doesn't meet these conditions, it's going to go to the next one. So at the beginning of the game, uh, you'll be able to walk across. But once you get this character uh, and there's dialogue going on, you'll be blocked off from the top, and you have to go back out, back up because you have to defend the castle. And then after you defended the castle and you've got sent on your next quest, now you come down here, his scenario switches, we do the fade out screen. When we go see that, <clears throat> we get transferred, excuse me, and then we see the dialogue for the next part, then we want to switch this over again so that you can just walk across it again. So that's uh, a few ways that you can do it. Uh, hopefully this helps you, uh, Cody. And if anybody else has any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys for being awesome. Thank you for subbing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for your favorites. Your, all of the stuff you guys are doing. The awesome feedback. I really appreciate it. Even if I don't reply to every single comment, I do read every comment. And thank you guys so much. And we will see you in the next tutorial.